I'm going to use this equipment here to explore beamforming at 28 gigahertz. That's a millimeter wave frequency that's being developed for 6G mobile communications. And in particular, we're going to look at the beam widths. Now, it's a common assumption that the beam widths are going to be very narrow at the millimeter wave band. And the logic goes that the frequency is high, the wavelength is low, well, that means that the antenna elements are going to be small, and so each antenna element can't radiate much power, so you need lots of elements, and therefore you're going to have a narrow beam. But is this actually going to be the case? And here we've got equipment from TMYTech, and it's an excellent setup for testing beamforming at millimeter wave. And you can see the array here has 16 radiating elements, but in fact there are only four channels. And we're going to be beamforming in the horizontal direction. Each of the vertical columns are all connected each to a different channel. Uh, this is a form factor which would be reasonable for a mobile phone in 6G mobile communications. It's unlikely that you're going to get more elements onto a back of a mobile phone than we're seeing here. The wavelength at 28 gigahertz is one centimeter, and these are half a centimeter apart. So let's see what the beam width is in practice. And I'm going to do that by looking at this software here. We can see that all the gains are equal here on the four channels and all the phase offsets are equal on the four channels as well. So this means that our antenna is radiating with a beam that is going straight out perpendicular from the array. So as I turn the array around now, we will start seeing the gain rise because the receiver is over here. And as I do this, let's see what happens. The gain starts coming up, of course, and then we go through the perpendicular and it goes down again. And so this is the beam shape that we're seeing. Let's go back and find the, the middle of it here. And we find that the middle, the peak is in fact when the angle here shows zero. And so it is maximum gain in that direction. The gain is minus 24 dBm. So let's see what the 3 dB width of the beam is. So we need to go to minus 27. So if I rotate it around this way to find minus 27, then we find around about here. And if I look on there, it's uh, 12 degrees. So let's go in the other direction to find minus 27. And we go here, here we are, minus 27. And if I look in there, it's also 12 degrees in the other direction. So we have a beam width of 24 degrees when we're electronically steering the beam directly out perpendicular. So let's try steering the beam to a different angle. Let's try 30 degrees. So for 30 degrees, there is a formula. It relates the distance between the antenna elements and the wavelength and the angle you're looking for. And that tells us for 30 degrees, we need 84 degree of phase offset between the four different channels. In this system, there is six bits resolution in the phase steps. And so each phase step is gonna be 5.6 degrees. So for 84 degrees offset between the different channels, we need 15 steps. So in the software here, I'm going to put 15 steps for the second channel here, 30 steps for the third channel, and 45 steps for the last channel. And now we can see, of course, that the gain has dropped because the antenna is still pointing in the direction of the uh, receiver, but we've now electronically steered the beam away from that. So as I turn around here, we should start seeing that the gain is going to increase as I come around closer to 30 degrees. And in fact, there we go, it is increasing. And it gets to a maximum and then starts coming down. So we're seeing the beam shape. And interestingly, for both of these beams that we've seen so far, we don't see any side lobes. So I'm going to go back and find the center of this. And we find that the center, let's have a look for that here. It's just around about here. If I look on the scale, it's a little bit less than 30. It's actually 28 degrees. So now we'll find the 3 dB beam width for this. So we're going, this is this power here. Interestingly, this power now is a higher power than the power we got when we steered the beam directly out perpendicular. Uh, so that's interesting. So here we've got minus 22. So now we need to go to minus 25 to get 3 dB 
uh, beam width. So let's go down and find minus 25. And we spin it around here, 24, there's 25. And if I look on the uh, graph here, it's um, a beam width here. We've come um, 15 degrees around from the uh, 28 degrees that we were that we got as a peak. So let's go back in the other direction and find where it drops down to 25. Here we are here. And if I look here, that's also 15 degrees in the other direction. So now we have a wider beam. This is now 30 degrees of 3 dB beam width. Uh, let's try even more extreme uh, and see if this trend continues. So let's go for an electronically steered at 60 degrees. And to do this, we just need to double each of these numbers. So we need to go to 30 here. We need to go to 60 here. And we'd like to go to 90 for the last one, but we can't because there's only 64 phases around the circle. And so what we need to do here is uh, go to channel 26, which is uh, 63 plus, or 64, because there's 64 around the circle, uh, 64 plus 26 gives you the full way around the circle. So now we're electronically steering at 60 degrees. So as I turn around now, we should see that it stays low and then comes up. But interestingly, it's coming up now, even though we're nowhere near 60 degrees. So this has come up here. And as I keep turning, it's going down. So what we saw there was a side lobe, uh, which we didn't see in the other two examples. So as you electronically steer to more extreme cases, you start to see more effects of these side lobes. So as we keep turning around here, we're seeing that the gain is coming up. And let's see, it of course, will go down as we go through past 60 degrees. So that's uh, the, the main lobe at 60 degrees. Let me go back and find where the peak is here. And so the peak is where are you seeing it here? This is about the peak. And interestingly, this peak is at 50 degrees. So we chose values to hit 60 degrees, but in fact, in reality, it, the peak is at 50 degrees. And this is a natural difference between theory and practice. So let's see now, this is minus 26.7, so we've got to go to minus 29.7 to find the 3 dB beam widths. So let me find those. I'll just go and find where 29 is. And here it is, and I'm looking there, and that's a 15 degrees uh, below the 50 degrees, that's 45 degrees there. And let's go back in the other direction. And we find that we come down here and that's a, a reading here of 15 degrees in the other direction. So now we've got 15 degrees in each direction, which is a 30 degree beam width. So this is a similar beam width to what we had at 30 degrees when we electronically steered to 30 degrees. But now, interestingly, we're not pointing it at 60 exactly. So we've got to uh, understand that in terms of what we intend to have and what happens in practice. But also we get this side lobe, which we will need to take into account in a practical system. So hopefully this has given you more insights into practical beam widths. Uh, it's not true that beam widths at 28 gigahertz in the millimeter wave band are incredibly narrow. They can be as wide as 24 degrees straight on a perpendicular and even up to 30 degrees as we've seen as you electronically steer away from perpendicular. And the power actually went up and then went down, which was an interesting thing that we measured here in this practical system. So if you found this video interesting, give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos and that helps the channel. And you can check out a video recently released on the channel on calibration using the same equipment. Of course, there's also a website which has a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.